Hello, folks. This is Chris Biffle, broadcasting live October 25th, a Tuesday. We've got an incredible program for you tonight. It's all about critical thinking with some new material that no one has ever seen because we developed it this morning right here in beautiful Ukaipa. Yes, my friends, delighted to be with you. Let's look at our opening screen. And my dear colleagues, here we are. Whole Brain Teaching, Brain Toys, Part 2. Last week was Part 1, my friends. And if you want to see last week's program or any Whole Brain Teaching program, just go to wholebrainteaching.com. They're archived there for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new to us, you can type in your questions and pay attention to the answers from the people in red. The ladies in red, they're all ladies. They are our whole brain teaching all-stars. They're the ones with deep experience and passionate commitment to this worldwide movement. Yes, worldwide, my friends. We've got someone on tonight from Russia. Your dear Coach B will be going to Istanbul in a little while. We've had teachers from Egypt, Pakistan, India, China, Japan, the Philippines, Colombia. We've even got a couple of young women online tonight from British Columbia, if you can imagine that. Here we go. Let's talk about these incredibly fun brain toys. And we'll start with a brand new graphic that no one has ever seen before. These are our two friends, two birdie friends from Birdland. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or professional development credit? Easy breezy details are at the end of the program. This is program 509, my friends. And if you want the slides or professional development credit, we'll tell you how to do it at the end of the program. Here is our preview. Here's the six questions we're going to answer. One, what are brain toys? Two, how many brain toys are there? And then the three brain toys we're talking about tonight, the Because Clapper, the Example Popper, and the incredible Two-Finger All-Terrain Action Figures. And then our last question is, how can brain toys be used in language development? So my friends, let's just stop for a second. Anyone out there using brain toys? Here's the gestures that go with these brain toys. The because clapper, like that, we give ourselves one clap of applause when we use because. You'll find out why because is so important. When the kids are using examples, they say, for example. They're pulling an example out of the top of their head. And I'm sure that you'll agree, giving examples is crucial to critical thinking. You make a big generalization, and then let's illustrate it with an example. Harry Potter is a clever young man. For example, he's very good at unlocking the secrets of the school he attends. And the two-finger action figures, I mean... Actually, tonight I brought in two two-figure action figures. Here they are. They're roaming around in the air. But we'll show you how you can use them on Arm World, and of course you could use them on Desk World. All right, let's move on. McGee, you used them with the whiteboard this week. They love it. Palmdale Heather, of course. Scrap Bunny, my oh my, I love Brain Toy. Scrap Bunny, we haven't seen you for a while. Shame on you. Welcome back. Let's look at our next screen, my friends. Here's a new colleague of mine. He looks very much like Mr. Franklin, but he's Mr. J. Jive, and he's got a cool way of talking. 
Mr. J. Jive wants to know, what's the Bama Jamma on brain toys? See, that's the way Mr. J. Jive talks, folks. How do you like Mr. J. Jive? He's always got some jivey bebopping way of talking. I love the guy. Good friend of mine. So he wants to know, what's the Bama Jamma? I'm going to tell you, Mr. J. Jive. Brain toys are gestures students use to develop critical thinking skills and enliven lessons. And Biffy B says, good question. That's how Biffy B talks. Well, let's get an answer. Let's see what brain toys there are. How many brain toys are there? Here are the brain toys as of today. Air whiteboard, sockless hand puppets, and props we talked about those last week. That program is online, permanently archived at wholebrainteaching.com in the middle of the page. This week, three more. Because Clapper, Example Popper, Two Finger All-Terrain Action Figures. And next week is the Brain Toy Extravaganza. Five Brain Toys, the Infinity Sack, Vocab Candy, the Brain Dial, Compare, contrast, and the famous combos. Folks, we're looking to see right now with our live audience here on October 25th, who has used which of these brain toys? Which brain toys are your kids' favorite? We'd love to know. Just let us know. Well, Jesse, you are Jessica, you're from Cleveland, Ohio. And E.V. Miles, you're from Laurel, Maryland. Scrap Bunny, you're up there in Pittsburgh, California. Anybody using the brain toys? Oh, yes, I see that we are. Air whiteboards are being used in Canada. Fantastic. Let's learn a little. The bungee guy. Yes, Palmdale Heather. Example Popper, says Feltlana. The example Popper is used in Russia. Educarp in Florida uses the example popper, sockless hand puppets, because it's now the because clapper, my friends. It used to be the because slapper. I think the clapper is more appropriate. Yes. Oh, let's give that person one applause for using the because. Oh, my goodness. Here is our new friend, Jay Jive. What's the skinny mini on the because clapper? Oh, Mr. J. Jive, I just love your spirit. I'm going to tell you. But Mr. J. Jive, I'm taking you to Birdland for your answer. Here is info about the because clapper. The because clapper is simple. Students clap one hand on the other whenever they say because. Let's look at it a live demo of the Because Clapper. Here it is. Watch me now. Don't let me go too fast for you. Because. I love whole brain teaching because it uses the whole brain. Folks, can you use the word because? Blank, because, blank. Use it with a content word. The challenge is can you get kids to use because with vocabulary, academic language? Talk to me. Let's see what samples we got. I'll, I'll take a look at your answers in a few seconds. I know it takes a while to type it in. Here's our next screen. And it answers an obvious question. Why is the because clapper important? Because is the single most important word in critical thinking. Because introduces evidence to support a point. BC girls, thank you. The sun is important to the earth because it provides heat and light. Oh, there is a science because right there. And Deb Weigel, you've got students teaching teachers about the Because Clapper. Answer choice B is incorrect because we're using it helping kids to prepare for state tests. 
People change over time, says C.M. McGee in Utah, because they grow. We pay attention to what a character says and does because it gives us a clue to character traits. You see the universal power, my friends, I'm sure, of the Because Clapper. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty, which is where we live in whole brain teaching. Let's just stop there for a second. You know, my friends, you know what's going to happen. What's going to happen? My old friends, tell everybody what's going to happen. You know this tone of voice, right? Yeah. Glasses are coming off. Here's the deal in whole brain teaching. About 5% theory, 95% nitty gritty practice. See? We're not up here in the ivory tower. We're down in the trenches. Almost everything we do is talking about how you apply it, how you can use it on Monday using the teacher's favorite word, a more f uh, 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 a more desired favorite word than because. It's free, yes. How do we know that? We're teachers. We're all broke. Let's get back to the program and let's put those glasses back on, Coach B. All right, I will. My dad always said that you can talk to yourself and answer yourself, that's okay. But when the third person gets into the conversation, that's when you've got to look out. Oh, I miss that guy. Here we go. What are examples of the use of because? All right. Answer. I like whole brain teaching because it makes learning fun. Note, my friends, that what comes after the because is the evidence that supports what comes before the because. I like whole brain teaching because it activates the entire brain. So the reason why this person likes whole brain teaching, their evidence is that it activates the entire brain. Talk a little bit more about this key word in critical thinking. I watch the Oscars because I want to see if anyone does something goofy. That's the reason I watch the Oscars. Because introduces the reason the stuff before the because, that's the conclusion that's supported by the reason. Why do I watch the Oscars? You want to know? I want to see if anyone does something goofy. That's my reason. That's my because. Fractions are difficult. What's your evidence for that? How can you prove that fractions are difficult? Because, there's that because clapper, there are lots of rules to remember. Next screen. I'm not going to vote because my candidate won't win. Once you get the kids clapping on the because, then you can talk about, is this good evidence or is this weak evidence? I'm not going to vote because what is a good reason for not voting? Well, that's when you start really digging into the power of the because. What are our good reasons? What are our thumbs-up reasons? What are our thumbs-down reasons? You're doing critical thinking then, my friends. Dr. Zeus is a great author because my teacher said so. You know, my dear colleagues, I'm just, I'm getting an idea right now. I'm getting such an idea that it's making my glasses go all shiny. See, there's a special brainwave pattern that shines up the glasses. You can tell, oh yeah, oh, he's getting a good idea. So what we could do is, we could give kids examples of very weak becauses. Dr. Seuss is a great author because his name starts with S. Would you please tell your friends in class, is that a good because, a strong because, or is that a weak because? Oh, we could say a strong because or a weak because. When they're talking about strong or weak becauses, they're talking about strong or weak evidence, they're talking about strong or weak arguments, strong or weak reasoning. Brand new idea, and you can tell. It's making my glasses go all filmy, light-reflectingly strange.
Yeah, I gotta calm down here. How is the because clapper introduced in class? The teacher speaks a sentence that uses because and then claps her hands. She asks students to repeat her words and gesture. You know how to do that. What's the next step? The teacher asks the students to, to use the because clapper as they complete sentence frames. I like recess because. Reading is fun because. We are cool because. Kids are not just going to complete these sentence frames once as they talk to their neighbors, but as many times as possible. Then you can move your discussion into, is this a strong because or is this a weak because? If I was redoing this program, and I will one of these days, I would introduce at this point a distinction that we're going to be using with the because clapper. So go in tomorrow, use your because clapper, and then get kids talking about the difference between strong because and weak because. What makes a strong because strong? What makes a weak because weak? One way to do this, and it's consistent with what we do in whole break teaching, is we'd ask them, all right, give me some weak becauses. What we want to do is have students make mistakes on purpose to clarify what the right way of doing things is. My teacher is great because. The story was entertaining because. Right. And we're back to one of our previous programs, Prove It, which was helping kids understand how to use critical thinking to prepare for the state tests. Here's our next screen. What are good uses of the because clapper? Responding to a teacher's question, discussing a story, explaining any process, providing evidence for opinions, supporting conclusions, any verbal activity that requires reasoning. Wow! You know what? Let's bring on a new colleague that none of you have met before. It's Ms. Linenthal. She shares a name with one of my favorite teachers, Mark Linenthal from San Francisco State, who taught me how to write poetry. I dearly miss that man. Here's Ms. Linenthal. You can use the Because Clapper for any verbal reasoning. I'd just like to add one more word. What word do you think my friend Mrs. Linenthal is going to add? Dr. Kathy Jones, good to have you online. Indeed, use because to help kids understand the meaning of vocabulary words. So, Nancy, you think she's going to say yes? Indio Tiffany, you don't have a... I'll tell you what Ms. Linenthal is going to say. She's going to say this, my friends. Here we go. Wow! If you can use a because clapper with any verbal reasoning, that deserves a wow. And Ms. Linenthal, wonderful to have you on board tonight. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Ms. Linenthal, let's bring on our friend, Jay Jive. Yes, let's do bring him on. Mr. Jay Jive wants to know, Give me the scammy lammy on the example popper. All right, let's give Jay Jive the scammy lammy on the example popper. Our next brain toy. Here it is straight from Birdland, my friends. The example popper is easy breezy. Students pull an example out of the top of their head as they say, for example. You know what? Here's what's great about video. I can show you the example popper. When kids are saying, giving an example, they go like this. For example, zoop! Yeah, we put in the air comma, and whenever you use the words for example, you've got to put in an air comma. For example, that is a dependent clause, dependent on the rest of the information in the sentence for its existence. It's dependent on independent clauses. Oh, we'll have a grammar lesson here one of these days, but not tonight. Let's keep going forward with the example popper. 
Why is example popper important? Adding examples to support a point is a key thinking and writing skill. Thank you, my friends from Birdland. Thank you very much. Well, the obvious question is this. The obvious question is, how is the example popper introduced in class? The teacher makes a generalization. Students repeat the generalization. Now, a good way to make generalizations is to use one of three words. You can say all, no, or some. All students in this class love fractions. That's a generalization. Some students in this class love fractions. No students in this class love fractions. Those are generalizations ap applying to broad categories. You can make other kinds of generalizations like um, Harry Potter is a very smart character. Or another generalization would be everyone should go to college. But start the kids off with all, no, or some, so they get the feel that this generalization applies to a whole bunch of stuff. All right, let's go back to our slides. Next point. What's the next step? The teacher asks the students to use the example popper after generalizations written on the board. This is a great school for example. They're going to turn to their neighbors and give as many ways to fill in that as possible using the example popper. My friend is nice. For example. Math is hard. For example. I think you're understanding that whenever we use for example we gotta have a setup sentence, a generalization, a large statement. What are good uses of the example popper? Responding to a teacher's question, discussing a story, explaining any process, providing examples for opinions, supporting conclusions, any verbal activity that requires reasoning. Let's stop for a second my friends. So the two brain toys tonight are so central to reasoning. Take off my glasses here. Because Clapper introduces a piece of evidence to support a conclusion. Example Popper provides an illustration to show the truth of a generalization. And generalizations and conclusions are stuff we want kids to use all the time, but not by themselves. Too often kids will give us a generalization or they'll give us a conclusion. We want the evidence or we want examples and sometimes we want both. Oh yeah, class is going back on. Why am I so passionate about this? Because I spent 40 years teaching critical thinking to college students. And a lot of the stuff that I'm telling you tonight was news to them. So let's get it started down in those lower grades. Class is back on. Here we go. Oh, goodness gracious, look who's waiting in the wings. But dear Mrs. Linenthal, you can use the example popper for any verbal reasoning. i just like to add four more words. Remember Mrs. Linenthal from last time? Mrs. Linenthal, it's so good to have you back. I wonder what your four more words are. I'm not going to keep this international audience waiting any longer. Mrs. Linenthal, Ms. Linenthal is so excited about the example popper that can be used for any verbal reasoning. She has four more words. Here they are. Wowee woo wow. That's how Ms. Linenthal feels about the example popper that can be used for any verbal reasoning. And I must say, I agree with her. Let's look at Mr. J. Jive, our favorite jazz bow. What's the birdie wordy on all terrain action figures? Sounds like heavy duty fun. That was Biffy B. Biffy B is always floating around in here, folks. 
Mrs. Connerly, my sixth grade teacher, good to have you here. Students use two fingers on each hand to make action figures and then walk them around desk world or arm world. Boys must love it. All right, here we go. This is why we're glad we got video. Watch me now, my friends. So, here are my two finger action figures. Here is arm world. So, I walk them this way. Walk, 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 walk. Two finger action figures. Yes. So here's the start of the story, and then this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens. Here's the first thing you do to, to solve a math problem. Here's the next thing, here's the next thing, here's the next thing, here's the next thing. So I can decide, describe a process, how to write an essay, how to solve a problem, how to line up for lunch, or I can describe an event. Um, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Processes or events. Two finger action figures. You know, I'm feeling so good about this, I might show you the two finger action figures with the anti gravity boots. Anybody interested? But before we get to the two finger action figures with anti gravity boots, fellow teachers, tell me some uses you can immediately see. So you'll be demoing tomorrow how to use two finger action figures. And your kids will be using them to explain a process or explain events in a narrative. Who can see ways to use these two-finger action figures? Deb Weigel, I know you're on top of this. I love to see students using their two-finger action figures while taking a story comprehension test. Whoa, that makes the glasses go all wiggly-waggly. Uh, retelling a story, that's right, Nancy, up there in Palmdale writing a procedure for a lab activity in science. Sylvia, are you a science person? I bet you are. Scrap Bunny, I love action figures. We use it to retell stories. Steps of photosynthesis, Southern teacher. Oh yeah, I love the science colleagues we've got on tonight. Wonder what my Washington people are thinking. What's going on up there in British Columbia? Svetlana, have you ever tried over there in Russia two finger action figures? Yes, Atena, you've got to look at this from the beginning. Multiplication facts. Steps of how to format a paper. Yes, Becca. Listing strategies. Sound effect in a story and sequence. Square, two, square root teacher. I'm sorry that you're not able to hear anything. Great for following multi-step directions. Oh, you guys are loving the two finger. All right, all right, all right. Fantastic response. I'm really thinking about showing you the two finger action figures with the anti gravity boots. I might even, I, I would have to be just crazy happy. I mean, the glasses would really have to be zinging here for me to show you the two finger action figures with the anti gravity boots morphing. <laughs> oh, morphing. Ah, I bet you'd, bet you got some boys that love to have play with those every day. But let's go on and see if we got some examples here. How about some examples, says one of our yet-to-be-named colleagues. Oh, I got a ton of examples. Here's my examples. What examples? We got examples up the kazoo. B-Y-O-K. B-Y-O-K. You're wondering, what's Coach B talking about, B-Y-O-K? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Bring your own kazoo. That's the kind of party we're talking about, whole brain teaching. We got stuff up the kazoo. Bring your own kazoo, BYOK. I thought that one up on the highway the other day. Yeah. That's what I do on the highway. I think about kazoo jokes. All right, here we go. Two finger action figures. Create a walkthrough of a story. Show the steps in writing an essay. Steps. As an action figure walks up a student's arm, arm world, the events in a story mount. See that? Mount. There's a metaphor to the climax. 
two finger two finger action figures on two action figures on Death World show the right and wrong way to line up for tetherball. Dumb and dumber action figures explain two wrong ways to solve math word problems. An ice skating action figure carves a map onto desk world. Using anti-gravity boots, action figures hop from one point to another. There it is, my friend. Here it is, my friend. So, you know what? We're talking about how to write an essay, and we get to uh, transitions. And oh, those transitions are very important. Whenever we get a transition in there, we get to use the anti-gravity boots. Or we're telling a story, and this is an exciting part. And then some other stuff happens, and another exciting part. So we use the anti-gravity boots to emphasize anything we want that's important. Or we tell the kids, listen. Kids are good today. You've been using the two-finger action figures. Use the anti-gravity boots in a way to emphasize what's important in the process of photosynthesis. First this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and then the sun shines like that. Anti-gravity boots. Exclamation point, Jesse, yes. For the problem in the story, Budsley, you're right. Those anti-gravity boots would really, really work. Um, you know what? It isn't too hard for special ed, Atena. We use this in special ed. We just go slower. Jesse, whenever they see a synonym for a certain word of the day, yes, let's get those anti-gravity boots hopping for those synonyms. Now, here we go. Down in the trenches, how could the Because Clapper, Example Popper, and Two Finger Action Figures be used for language development? Well, we're already using them for language development, but notice this. This is our oral writing pattern. If you missed the oral writing broadcast, it's online at wholebrainteaching.com. You ask a question, they give you an answer, they start giving adders, and then there's a concluder. Let me just give you a, a quick version of oral writing. So you ask the question, what are the steps in photosynthesis? Whenever you do this, that means you want to hear a complete sentence. Every other kid is doing this too. Why? Because you want every other kid listening for a complete sentence. If they're doing this, they're not doing something else with their hands. So you get a complete sentence. The first step in photosynthesis is blah, blah, blah. I wish I knew what it was. Then you go like this, and every other kid goes like this. That means you want an adder. You want a detail sentence that is going to give you more information about those first steps. And then you tell the kid, you know what? Give me a because clapper there, my friend. Could you give me an example popper about photosynthesis? Could you use your action figures to tell me more about photosynthesis? That's how you weave these brain toys in to helping kids develop more complex thoughts. Instead of a sentence, a paragraph with critical thinking woven in. And then you go for the concluder. In conclusion, zoop, and then they wrap it up. That's how all of this could be used for language development. Now, my friends, there has been an enormous, I'd almost say, firestorm of interest. i got to come back on here, if you don't mind. There has been a firestorm of interest across the Internet, around the world, really. Let's be honest. There's no reason to be humble at this point. A firestorm of interest in how can you teach critical thinking with a deck of cards? Ah, yeah. Deck of cards. Very cheap prop. How could you teach critical thinking? And what does all that have to do with the stuff I just said? My friends, I challenge you. You know, I haven't even shown you the two-finger action figures, anti-gravity boots, morphine capacity engaged. Maybe I won't, but I'm going to challenge you. 
any ways you can see to use this stuff with a deck of cards. Let's see what you got. I'm going to put on my glasses here. Because you guys always have the greatest ideas. When you have a great idea, what I do is I take it, and then I go to a conference, and I pretend like I invented it. But yeah, that's Coach B. We got 60 viewers. Fantastic. I'll play 24 with a deck, says Square Root Teach. Here it comes, says Bu Busley. How can you? All right. Here we go. First, I have a simple game, and then I have, I have the whole brain teaching, critical thinking with a deck of cards, ultimate game. What's the ultimate game called? If you were here early, you know what it was called. Indio Tiffany will tell you what it's called. She'll type this incredible name. Just the name is going to get your kids, oh man, I got to play that. It's a Halloween special name. Yes, my friends. That's why I'm so excited. Brand new stuff. Nightmare Aces. That's the name of the game. Nightmare Aces. Now, I got the simple game coming, and then I'm going to do Nightmare Aces in a second. But just tell me. I'm product testing this, taking off my glasses. What do you think of the name Nightmare Aces? All I want to hear is, it's so fantastic that your heart just stopped. Don't give me any criticism. All we're looking for is, oh, Coach B, we love it. Yeah. Let's see what people think. Busley says, I can't wait. Nancy says she loves it. Jesse says, Halloween. Kids will love it, says Indio Tiffany. Truly brilliant, clear. The kids will flip. Totally know the kids will die to play. Well, it's Halloween. Okay, we can say that. All right. So let's go to the simple game. Then we're going to Nightmare Aces. Sounds irresistible. Yeah, Becca, your heart stopped. Can't function. Becca, we need you up there in Washington. Will someone just slap your face or something and get you to snap two here? I want you to be excited, but I don't want you to pass out, Becca. Come on. All right, here we go. Here's the simple game. Um, you're going to hand out playing cards face down. When a student is called on, she turns her card over. A red card means she must use an example popper. A black card means she must use a because clapper. So everybody, you hand out the cards to everybody. They get a black card. They have to use the because clapper. They get a red card. They have to use the example popper. And that's a way just to kind of get a feel of of what can be done. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, my friend. I thought this up, and I thought of some variation. Yeah, glasses come off. But then I thought, wait a second. There's 52 cards in the deck. As if we had a jewel that had 52 dimensions. How could we use all 52 of the cards? We could use the black cards. We could use the red cards. But we've got ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king of four different suits. Man, if we could get all 52 of those cards involved in some kind of way, that'd be something. Here's the first version of it. Odds are it's going to be better next week because of your guys' tweaks. But let's look at Nightmare Aces. Love to hear your suggestions and your reactions. All right. Uh, not Nightmare Aces yet. <laughs> What do we got? All right. Yes, Nightmare Aces coming up. Here we go. Get ready. Nightmare Aces. I'm going to go slowly. Write 13 vocabulary or content words on the board and number them. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King. Let's just stop there for a second. All right. You need 13 key words. And by now, you've got 13 words. They can be any words that are vocabulary, but I would prefer that you'd use content words like fraction, hexagon, thesis. Put all of them up on the board and you number them. Ace, two, three, four, five, etc. Jack, queen, king. All right, what's your next step? Now, you're going to deal out one card to every student in class. If the kid gets a heart, they're going to have to use blank because blank. That's the because clapper. And I'll tell you how they use it in a second. Any diamond, the student must use because, comma, blank. Let's go over that. 
All right, look. There's two ways to use because in a sentence. I like bananas because they're so tasty. And because is right there in the center. But we also want sentence variety. Because bananas are so tasty, zoop, I like them. So we want kids to be able to use because in either one of those ways. So if they get a heart, they're going to be using because in the simple way, because right in the middle. But oh, if they get a diamond, they're going to have to use because with the blank and the comma. Of course, you're putting these sentence frames on the board. Let's go back. Now, we're just talking about suits right now. We're not talking about two, three, four, five, etc. Wait till you see nightmare aces, my friend. All right. Any club. Students must use an adjective before the because. Let's look at how that would work. I love tasty bananas because they're so good for me. Throwing in the because is crucial for language development. It's so crucial we're going to have to come up with a because brain toy. But do you see how the adjective adds literally color, <laughs> adds flavor to any sentence? So if you pull a club, my friends, the sentence frame on the board is going to show you you've got to use the adjective before the because. I am a fan of those fantastic cardinals because I was born in St. Louis. That's my period. You see, fan, not just cardinals, fantastic cardinals. That is the word that modifies the noun. That's what adjectives do. Kids don't use adjectives naturally when they talk. Not special word adjectives. You might say very happy. Let's get them to use adjectives if they pull a club. Here we go. Now let's see what happens if you pull a spade. Any spade the student uses because in the more complicated way and then the adjective. Let's look at how the spade would go. Because I was born in St. Louis, Zoop, I love those fantastic cardinals. There's my adjective. So you put the adjective at the end of that sentence before we put the adjective at the start. Powerful language development there. Now you don't have the whole picture. I decided for once in my life I was going to make a complicated game because I think kids love complicated, like, oh, we got to do this, oh, we got to do that. Go look at Pokemon if you want to see an example of a complicated game or any video game. Kids can master complexity. It makes it more fun. All right. Now, thus, if a student draws a three of clubs, she must write as many sentences as possible using vocabulary three and the club pattern. Now do you see it, my friends? If a student draws a nine of diamonds, she must write as many sentences as possible using vocabulary word nine and the diamonds pattern. Tell me what you think of that, because I'm not to the nightmare aces part yet. Look at me, my friends. Look at me. You've got the 13 vocabulary words. Those correspond to the numbers on the cards. See, 13 vocabulary words, numbers on the cards. The suits of the cards show the patterns that must be used with those vocabulary words. So you suddenly you've got 52 different combinations that can be used here with your 13 vocabulary words. And I'm not even to the face cards or the nightmare aces. Here it comes. You're right. Let's take a look at the next screen. Next screen. Nightmare Aces continued. If you pull a jack, every sentence must be exactly seven words long. That'll drive them nuts. If you pull a queen, 
every sentence must be more than nine words long. If you pull a king, every sentence must be more than 11 words long. And the nightmare ace, every sentence must be more than 13 words long and can't use and. Don't worry, my friends. I'm going to go over this again, but let's just talk about nightmare aces. So if you pull an ace in this game, you've got to use the ace word from the board. Has to be 13 words long, this sentence, and you can't use and. Oh, that's a nightmare. In fact, do you see the darkness getting darker around me? Yeah, that's that Halloween effect. Special lighting effect I've worked on all day to have the sun go down at just the right time. Let's look at some examples. I want you to be sure you get nightmare aces. Look, examples. The kid pulls a nine of hearts. So they look up at the board, what is word nine? And then they look at what they do with the hearts. Vocabulary word nine, and then they're using that simple hearts pattern. They're writing these down as many as they can. They pull a spade, a four of spades. They use vocabulary word four, then they use the spades pattern with the adjective. That's the spades pattern. They pull a queen of diamonds. Well, they use the diamonds pattern. And since it's a queen, it has to be more than nine words. Oh, they pull an ace of spades. They have to use the spades pattern, which is the most complicated because pattern, with an adjective more than 13 words, and they can't use and. Yes, Dr. Kathy Jones, you could use it with math. Excellent point. Let's go back. Now, here's how it's played. You deal every student a card face down. The student looks at the card but doesn't let anyone see. The students write as many sentences as possible in three minutes using the pattern dictated by the card. At the end of three minutes, students trade cards with a neighbor without revealing the card they're trading. Oh, maybe they're going to slip an ace of spades or a jack of diamonds. Repeat it as often as you wish. At the end of the game, some students read their sentences aloud. Extremely good sentences, especially face cards and most especially aces, can earn the class slightly less homework or some other special reward. But keep the reward small. It's a long year. What do we have here? My friends, if you've been paying attention to me, you know that because is the single most important word in critical thinking. We've got 52 different ways to give kids practice in using all different varieties of a cause jazzed up with adjectives. I see I'm getting a little dark here. I'm going to go for my onset illumination. You, you just ask me some questions. Do you get the nightmare aces? Ask me any questions you want. Or give me some tweaks. How can we make it even more fun? I'm turning on the stage lights. Here we go. Now those are the super powerful stage lights. Yes, my friends. All right. Questions, comments? Great test review game. Okay, more than awesome. So do you intentionally assign A, Jack, Q, and King to very complicated terms? I think I would. I think that's a good idea. Let's make Ace, Jack, King, and Queen. And you've got those 13 up there on the board. Let's make those some of the toughest terms. So, oh, they get that face card. Oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? Kids love to worry out loud. Oh, gosh, what am I going to do? Hey, you're playing Nightmare Aces, baby. What would you think? Here's what we say. Here's what we say. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. The kid starts, what am I going to do? You say, uh, my friend, you're playing Nightmare Aces. What did you think it was going to be? A walk in the park? No, it's Nightmare Aces, baby. Think up an answer. That's why we call it Nightmare Aces. We didn't call it walk in the park aces. We didn't call it ice cream aces. We called it Nightmare Aces. Oh, Talk to me. How do you see it being used? Tell me some of the words you want here. 52 ways to use because. How important is because? It's 52 ways important. 
That's right. It's not kindergarten nap time aces. Yes, they could they could change it into a sentence, Deb. Good good point. Take it slow for little ones. You you just use a, a few of the uh, maybe you'd have four or five numbers on the board. I love it, says Jessica. Think of how I could apply it to math. Please do. Jessica, think out loud. Folks, go online to the forum and tell me how you're going to use Nightmare Aces. I'm really excited about it. I just can't think of a way that we can get kids to use because, which is so crucial, in more different ways. And throwing in those adjectives is going to be fantastic for language development. They're going to be begging us to play Nightmare Aces. Tiffany, what do you think about your kids out there in India? Heather, Nightmare Aces? You buying into it? Nancy, what do you think? Budsley? My ladies in red? Uh, use greatest common factors if it were an ace of spades. Yes. Simple machines vocabulary. Sylvia, whatever you, whatever that means. That's right. It's a game, not an assignment. Think about a square root. Teach social studies. Get your vocabulary words up there. My kids will love it, says India. I'm going to try it this week. I like that it's self-differentiating. It is self-differentiating, my friends, because the kids are writing at their own level. Greater than and less than. For K1, we'd break the limits down to five words or seven words. That's right, Deb. So that's what's nice about the word limit, is that it can be very flexible. Talking is prime. All right, my friends. I, I'm glad you feel good about Nightmare Aces. As good as I do. Let's look at our review. What are the brain toys? We told you. Told you how many brain toys there are. We talked about the Because Clapper, Example Popper, Two Finger, All Terrain Action Figures. And how can brain toys be used in language development? Especially with the word Because. You've been such an incredible audience tonight. Yes, I'm going to show you. The two finger action figures, morphin capacity. So here we go, watch me. So it's a long story. We're going this way, it's a long story, it's a long story. We come up this way and boom, we morph and we go down the other shoulder. So this gives you a very, very long process, a very long, and then oh, we go down the other shoulder. That's two finger action figures, anti-gravity boots, morphin capacity, engaged, yes. You got some boys that would love to do that? I bet you do. Yes, my friends. Give me some more questions or comments about Nightmare Aces. D. Vickers, you got a good idea. I'm thinking for math and little ones. You could say 4 plus 3 equals 7 because we had 4 toys and my friend gave me 3 toys. We'd have 7. If you can make that work, go for it. Climax of a story or when a character changes, that's right, Jesse. That's when we would use that morphine capacity. Well, let's see what Mrs. Connerly has to say to us tonight. Gosh, Brain Toys Part 2 sounds great, but how could I get a professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Mrs. Connerly, I am so glad you asked. Let me tell you. Go to wholebrainteaching.com, and I'm going to take you there in a second. Click on the PayPal button and donate $5.09. 509 is the code number for this program. Within a few days, I'll send you an email with a professional development certificate and a PDF copy of these slides. Let's see this incredible professional development certificate that I am going to send you. Look at that. No charge for the fancy blue border. So you get this one, you fill out the front part, you fill out page two that proves to your administrators that you actually watch the program. It helps you think a little bit about the program. Jay Jive has got a question for us, my friends. What's bebopping on Tuesday, November 1st? That's what Mr. Jay Jive wants to know. You notice I'm getting better at the Jay Jive voice as I go on? 
What's be boppin' on Tuesday, November 1st? That's how Mr. J. Jive talks. I hope I can remember that until next week. Here is Ms. Linenthal. I hear it's going to be a brain toy extravaganza. Infinity sack. Vocab candy. Brain dial. Compare contrast and combos. Ms. Linenthal, you are right. My friends, if you want more information about whole brain teaching, you know where to go. Wholebrainteaching.com. Look in the first steps menu. Post questions on the forum. Download our free ebooks. View the videos. And this video will be online in the next hour or so. I'm thinking you might want a copy, though, of these slides if you wanted a copy of the Nightmare Aces Rules. Extravaganza, yes, elementary matters. Don't you like that? Any more questions about Nightmare Aces or anything else? I'm going to take us, I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to talk to you while I dial up our internet connection. Let's see if I can bring it up. And I want to show you, let me show you how to get to our website. Here we go. I'm going to bring our website over and I'm just not sure if this guy is going to work for us or not. All right, website's not coming up. So we will just say, you got any more questions for us, my friends, please let us know. If not, we will see you next week for the Brain Toy Extravaganza. Lots more about brain toys. We finish up this three-part series we've had on critical thinking. And listen, my friends, you want me to come to your school and teach your class? I mean, come on, don't you really? I'll come to your school. I will even enlarge the screen. Send me an email. Actually get an administrator to send me an email. And either I or one of my colleagues like Deb Weigel or Andrea Schindler or Chris Rexted, we'd love to present a conference in your area. Everything we do is free to teachers. We do charge districts. What do we charge? We charge typically what they are accustomed to paying out-of-state presenters. So, we can talk about money matters. Have your administrator send me an email at chrisbiffle at wholebrainteaching.com. Love to hear from you, my friends. And keep on talking about this wonderful program, even though I'm signing off. God bless us all, my friends. We are in the greatest profession on earth. And here is our sign-off. Power to the teachers. Yeah. See you next week. God bless us all.